with the ever increasing threat on our network environments and our dependency on public multi-vendor solutions to provide the internet for us, we put ourselves more at risk. And this public connectivity provides that opportunity for the bad guy to see exactly what we're doing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this brief video and explain some of the details that I've described here on the screen. So let's take a look, first of all, at the business need, right? What is it that you're trying to do? So in this environment, we're just trying to get at a database. And this database, although illustrated as a remote site, site A, it could be anything that we want it to be. It could be internal as well. It doesn't matter. But we're trying to get to this database server. And in order to get to that database server, we have to have the ability to connect to those servers themselves. Illustrated there in the server form you see coming up on the screen. Then we need to, of course, create this connectivity between these server environments, right? And so to do that, we have to have an IP infrastructure that allows us to do that very thing. So let's draw on a cloud here in site A and site B because these are how we're connecting these two sites together and then of course we're going to have IP addresses that allow us to connect to those sites and be able to translate between the sites. Now it's important to note here that site A as you notice here is a 10.x address. The external up there on the cloud is a 200.x and the internal over at site B is a 12.x. This is not uncommon to have different IP schemas. And we're not going to talk about how exactly NATing works and the public IP addresses work. But just rest assured that the reality is here that there are different IP addresses. And that this is important to you because you have to realize that that translation occurs and the name recognition occurs as well to the specific resources that you need in this example to provide the database. So let's take a look here at what that really means, what that, what I just said means. So here we added here a NetBIOS name to the database server. Remember in our example here, we're trying to look at a database service. So it could be anything, by the way, it could be any a file share could be email doesn't really matter but here we have what we call a net bios name this is the name of the server itself in this case dbf1 now dbf1 is directly associated with that internal ip address 10.x.x.x all right that's what dbf1 is called the DNS table up here at the top, this translates essentially the information of, hey, DBF1 is at server IP address 10.x.x.x so that I can communicate with that. I have to have that domain name translate into the IP address. I got to have some sort of table and that exists within our environment. And it exists over at site B. Notice there's a DNS table there as well resolving names that are there because remember the ip here is different right remember you got a different ip over on the right side there at site a you got a different ip at site b and then you got a different ip there sitting in the cloud so all of these are a little bit different and we have to resolve these names well this name resolution creates unfortunately a great opportunity for cyber crime this public connectivity, because the cloud itself, that connectivity you see with the external IP on it there, that cloud itself may be multiple vendors within any environment. In fact, it's not uncommon to have you know a Verizon and a Sprint line sitting side by side. Because of all of that translation, we have to translate lots of records. Just as in this example, we have to identify where those servers are. Once a bad guy hacks in to any weak link on anywhere in this chain, now that bad guy knows exactly that the DBF1 is sitting at address 10.x.x. He knows the net BIOS name to the IP address. So what can we do? There's two things we can do. One, we can look at making our networks completely private, meaning that we're doing our own translation and providing our own communication. 
That is expensive and really designed only for large organizations and companies and federal agencies. The second thing we can do is be careful on the way we name our servers. Don't be as obvious. DBF1 is pretty simple to, to extrapolate that it is a database server. Name it something else. Name it Mickey Mouse. Have some sort of other translation for that NetBIOS name that you have that you're aware of inside your organization so that if the bad guy ever gets a hold of your DNS information, if he understands or she, bad person, understands uh, what that NetBIOS name is to the IP address, they won't immediately be able to correlate that that's a database server. It's just going to make it harder for them. Then they got to go in there and poke around and see what type of server it is. And then you have other security that's fighting them there. So those are the two things that you can do immediately to kind of fix this connectivity problem within the environments.